welcome to another video tutorial. Today we're going to make tunnel portals yeah, in HO scale and this is what they will look like when we have completed the work. Ahead of this uh, tutorial, I, I was kind of, you know, what portals to make? Should I make an old style stone arch portals or should I do more of a, like a semi-modern concrete or ultra-modern high-speed train portal? So I, I, I had this poll on, uh, so I invited to the poll uh, on both the Facebook uh, and on uh, YouTube here in the community chat or its community field uh, and um, uh, this poll was going on on Patreon, on my Patreon page. Let's let's have a look at the, the, the stats. Yeah, a total of 19 people voted, 10 for the old style, 7 for the semi-old and 2 for the ultra-modern high-speed train. The first person to vote in this competition was really fast. That was a guy from Swiss. His name is uh, Matthias Wissmann and I reward him with a pack of, this is uh, Reed. It's a uh, kind of long, thick grass in different color shades to use uh, along streams, lakes and uh, water pools. Very nice. I was thinking to make a, a hair extension of this. You see, I don't have too much hair left, but someone told me that the punk rock era is past. So never mind. Matthias, these are coming your way shortly. But hey, let's not talk more. Let's get started with the work. I will make these from Styroform or XPS board EN13164, which is the standard. Hopefully that will make it easier for you to find it in the stores. I start by cutting away a 15 by 15 centimeter big sheet. I adjust the Styroform slicer to 8 millimeter thickness. This type of slicer is really easy to make and I'm putting up a link in the right hand corner which leads to a tutorial where you can build one of these. Now let's switch the power on and slice those sheets. I'm going to slice the entire block of styrofoam, even though I only need four pieces for these four portals. The remaining sheets will be used for support pillars and other stuff. Next we need paper templates for these portals. I made it easy for myself and just printed out some portals I found on the internet. But you might want to make a special portal for some area that aren't available as a product. I mean, that is really the advantage by making the portals yourself. You can do models of things that's not commercially available. When you have drawn the contour of the portal onto the styrofoam sheet, we're ready to cut it out. I use a knife, a razor blade knife, to do the cutting like this. Okay, four portals ready for engraving. I typically start with the arch, the stone arch. I do the engraving using an old knife I had since the day I was in the military service. Yeah, so I just take the thumb as support and then I engrave all the way up to the center stone at the very top of the arch. This one needs to be a bit taller than the other stones in the arch so I'm marking this one separately and I engrave that first and then I continue by engraving all of the other stones in the arch. I also engrave the inside so the stone joints also are visible in the inner part of the portal. Right, now we're ready to cut out that stone arch. This is made because the stone arch will later be glued back in a slightly elevated uh, position above the rest of the wall. This is to give it a bit more contour. Cutting away the arch makes also the engraving of 
the rest of the stone wall much easier. So I'm starting to mark the rows of stone. I have a spacing or each stone row is four millimeter tall. And then I engrave the rows using the same knife. All right, the entire portal has now got its rows with stone. The engraving of the individual stones can either be made with a screwdriver or a piece of sheet metal, which I've folded together uh, like a tool. And you know, I found this kind of easy to work with. Screwdriver is a bit clumsy. And the knife will give marks in the stones around the actual stone you're engraving. So this is a really good. Now we've completed the engraving. Now it's time for those extra pieces. And I'm starting by cutting the covering stones, which will be lying on top of the portal and as well on the support pillars we will glue in place in a moment. All right, don't cut your fingers if you're doing it like I'm doing it here. Next thing is to engrave the support pillars. They will be one each on the sides of the portal. So I'm engraving those. I'm using a bit larger stones here. They're about one by one centimeter. And I also engrave the edges of this support pillar. Now it's time for assembly. I glue it all together using PVA glue. This is a standard type wood glue for indoor use, water-based that is. You cannot use anything with uh, solvents with this type of styrofoam because the styrofoam will melt. So if you cannot find any PVA glue, just use something water-based. See here I glue back the arch with some offset from the rear, which will make it stick out a bit in the front and give it a nice contour. Then it's time for the support pillars. Put glue on the back and then I place them on the wall. On the top parts. Right. Only one part remains now, and then we have completed the assembly of this double line portal. The single line portal is built up exactly using the same parts, so it's no difference there. We will now cover the entire portal front using a coarse sand plaster. This sand plaster is typically used for smoothening the walls before you're redecorating at home, you know, setting up new wallpaper. So I'm applying it first with the finger and then I work it in with a stiff brush like this. The purpose with this plaster is two. One is to act like grout in between the engraved stones and the other is to give a kind of stone-like texture on top of every stone. So without this uh, sand plaster, it does not look very good, but it does with the sand plaster in place. I remove excessive plaster using a wet sponge. And when it's dry, it looks something like this. Time for painting. For painting, I use black, white and burnt umber. The black and white, I blend them to a kind of light gray tone. And then I add the brown, the burnt umber, just to you know soften the gray tone a bit. Because if you only mix white and black, it will kind of turn a bluish. And we don't want that. We want it to be a kind of soft tone. I try to only apply this gray paint on the top surface of the stones and not so much in between the stones. This is because I want the wash we will apply later once this has dried to stick better in the joints between the stones than on the stones. And if you keep the plaster like this, then it will be really nice and black from the wash. 
one more thing remains before we're applying the wash and that is to add a bit more of details to individual stones in the wall. That is done by adding white and black to the already mixed gray color. So in the black end you will have a darker gray and in the white you will have a more light gray color. So I'm you know, in groups of three or four I paint the stones in other color and I also add some you know, brownish red stones. The result at this point can look a bit worrying but don't worry. The, it's very good to uh, exaggerate the contrast in the stones before the wash come on because after the wash has been applied all of these contrasts are vastly reduced. So here's the wash. It's a mix. It's also a grayish mix, but it contains a lot more water. Here we're talking like eight part water and only two part paint. I apply the wash richly over the portal and make sure that all of the surfaces are covered with this wash. Now what will happen when this dries or during the period it dries is that it will vanish more or less from the top and stay in between the stones and thereby increase the contrast between the stone and the grout. As a last uh, paint action I will be adding streaks of chalk, vertical streaks on the wall like this. They are typically coming out from between stones or from the top of the wall like this. I use a white acrylic paint for this and a brush in the size of one. Another nice detail to add is moss. I do that using coarse turf T63 light green and I apply that using PVA glue. The same type of glue I used to assemble the portal. I'll just sprinkle some of that coarse turf onto the glued areas and shake the excess part off. And by doing that, we have completed the portals. This is the single liner portal. And this is what the double liner portal looks like. Yeah, nice. All right. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please also help others to find this video by sharing it on your favorite uh, internet forums, like Facebook or wherever you're at uh, during your spare time. Uh, if you have any questions, at all about the methods or materials or anything just post them in a the comment field below and i'll respond to them as soon as possible if you if you're yet not a subscriber to the channel here on youtube please subscribe to the channel and you will get notification once next video goes live until that happens see ya